All right, well, not to totally kill the mood, but there was a very tragic event that happened a little while ago over in South Carolina where a 12-year-old boy died from a brain-eating amoeba. We have, actually have his uh, photo that we can put up on screen. Uh, it was a 12-year-old young boy named Jason Carr who went swimming. That's him. Very, very sad. Uh, but at the very least, we can learn how th this happened to him and avoid it happening to other people. Shelby? Yeah, so this is obviously a really, really tragic incident. Um, so the, the young boy's name was Jason Carr, and he went swimming at a very popular South Carolina lake called Lake Murray with his family. Um, and over the course of the few days following that, you know, what would otherwise be a really fun summer trip, right? Um, he started developing a headache and the headache didn't go away over like so he took some pain medication that helped for a little while and then the next day he continued to have the headache and then he started having nausea and other symptoms so all in all he ended up in the ER and that's when this discovered this discovery was made right that this is uh, what had happened to him mm -hmm. so within a week he had passed away and an, a, obviously super super tragic incident and now the family is pushing for greater awareness over you know these types of things specifically this type of brain eating amoeba in you know this part of the country which is actually it affects a much wider swath of the country than you might expect we can talk more about that in a bit as we go through but yeah um so now basically what they're asking for they're basically right now the plan is to have legislation uh, be introduced later this year, right? So the details are still a little bit vague on that, but this is the plan going forward, and they're asking for a few things. One, they're asking for there to be actual regular testing for this type of amoeba, right? Oh, this there's type not, of there's not right now. No, and that's one of the things that they learned when this happened to their son. They were devastated because, you know, one of the quotes that actually came uh, from some of the interviews that they gave is that, you know, if there was a sign on the beach saying, hey, the temperature is above 80 degrees in these conditions, or the water temperature is above 80 degrees in these conditions, this type of organism, there may be risk. Mm. Then they said they would never have gone in in the first place, right? So once they discovered this, you know, the lack of testing, the lack of, uh, so in South Carolina and many other states in the country, there's actually no law requiring this to be tested for and to be reported. So this type of infection, if you will. So they want to push for change, obviously, and raise awareness. So they want regular testing. In South Carolina right now, they actually do test beaches for this type of infection, but they don't test lakes. Mm. And obviously, those are a huge draw for a lot of summer family activities, right? If, if it had been, been found sooner or they had a suspicion what it was, is there something they could have done medically for it? So here's the thing. This is a, it's a very rare infection. Let me just give a quick number on this. Um, it was only discovered about 60 years ago uh, in Australia, right? So it's still relatively new in the whole medical field, right? But, um, and there have only been about 167 cases that we know of. So it's not a common thing to happen. And in fact, even if you are found swimming in water with this amoeba in it, it's actually very unlikely that you're gonna be infected. The problem is the rate of fatality, if you are infected, is the survival rate's about 3%. So it's very severe. And in that time, it's only about a week. Um, yeah, so the timeline for getting infected and then, you know, catastrophic medical harm is very, very short. But it, is there a treatment? Like, is there, there some are way treatments. to get it early? There are treatments. Actually, this brings up a great point. Um, so on top of this family's push for greater awareness. Uh, a couple of years ago, driven by other very similar cases, uh, there was a young kid in Arkansas who passed away uh, after playing on a splash pad in the summer, and another woman in Texas who actually just used a nasal rinse with tap water. And yeah, um, really, really, really freak accident, terrible cases. But in any case, they inspired a group of researchers in Orlando to actually develop a cure, well, not a cure, but a more of a diagnostic tool, let's call it. Uh, so what they do is they can take spinal fluid and they can actually determine whether this is what's causing your illness within three to five hours, which is a massive jump because previous to that, it, it would take weeks, like days, if not weeks, to actually determine whether or not the amoeba was the source okay, of these and headaches, then what? right? <laughs> the, the cures are basically like a cocktail of antibiotics and this okay, kind of thing, like so in really can. severe cases, yeah. In really severe cases, they can actually induce hypothermia to freeze brain tissue and prevent further damage while the antibiotics work. Yeah, but 
it's a, it's a very severe condition once you're affected with it. And, and here's what the AP wrote. Symptoms start as fairly standard headache and nausea. So you just like, you come back from the lake and you're like maybe a little nauseous or you have a headache, not a big deal. But by the time the pain becomes severe, it is almost always too late to save the infected person. So by the time you realize something's wrong, it's like yeah. nothing you can do. But yeah. What and, a shame, right? And it's not only lakes. Like I think the, what is it? Negleria fowlery, that's the amoeba. Uh, the, the, the woman in Texas, I think she was in her 70s. And um, she, the water that you're referring to, she got it from an RV. So some pump station probably was infected with it. So there's other places you can get it besides beaches and lakes. Uh, there was one case even, this is going to scare everyone at home, but uh, in a water park, you know, you're, you have a kid in a water park and it just happens to get in there. And of course, there's no signs. Of course, you wouldn't expect that to happen. People hear about it just in lakes or in nature. But, you know, if this thing gets somewhere, it can come, somebody takes a swim with, uh, in a lake, they can bring it into uh, a water park. It's very, it's, 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 it's almost amazing that they say it's super rare. Rabies is super rare. That kills far less people. One uh, point on that. It's very rare to get infected with it. The amoeba yeah, itself it's, is actually yes, very yeah. common. It's, they right? say it's very rare that, that, it, that it kills you. you again, like it. rabies, it's, it's 100 you know, you're dead. I think, I think that's another case uh, you kind of alluded to. You, you actually have to snort the amoeba, right? Like if you're swimming in the lake, you have to like accidentally like snort in water and then you get it. Usually how it happens is basically this. Yeah, you, you're essentially right. Um, if you want to talk about the CDC guidelines, the main point of like keeping yourself safe is keep your head above water, for instance, if you're going to swim in a lake. Or if you are diving, hold your nose when you dive, right? Because mainly the problem happens when a very strong influx of water goes into your nasal cavity. And then what happens is this single cell amoeba, obviously, single cell, very, very small, mm. it can surpass the skin barrier that protects your internal organs from like the exterior of your body. Mm. And this, so this amoeba is only thrives or dangerous when it's the water is over 80 degrees, is that? Yeah, so it's interesting. There are actually a huge amount of species of this type of organism. It's quite literally only one that causes this, you know, terrible disease in humans, right? Um, but yes, it needs an incubation uh, in very warm water. So it has to be above 77 degrees Fahrenheit and preferably uh, in scientific conditions for it to grow it for an extended time, basically. So yeah, this is not a common thing in any season outside of summer. It's really only a summer problem and it's also only in almost exclusively the lower half of the country, the warmer half. But every country. summer we hear one of these stories and just nothing gets done. Yeah, there's roughly about 10 cases a year. Um, like I said, 167 in the past 60 years. Uh, it's, it's quite a small margin. Well, but. luckily here in New York City, we're uh, kind of, uh, our climate doesn't allow for that, right? Shelby? <laughs> <laughs> well, go swimming in the Hudson, see what, see what happens. You wish you had a brain-eating bacteria. There might bacteria. be other problems. <laughs> yes. I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure other things would get you if you swam in the water here. I mean, but my, my thought is, it's like, do you need to regulate something that's really not that big of a threat? Because what I see happening is this. They're going to hire a guy and have this huge campaign to go look for this amoeba that kills really not, I mean, it's a tragedy, not that many people. They're probably going to find it because it's common. Then they're going to put warning signs all over the place. They make a big deal about something that's not really impacting that many people. But, okay. I feel like I'm more likely to get hit by a guy like on a moped in New York. Well, you definitely die. are. Yeah. But, you know, you have a chance of survival. I will <laughs> yeah. say this. The other day I went to the park with my kid and there was a sign that just said, like, watch out for ticks. They're in high grass areas. And of course, I know that ticks are in high grass areas, but just seeing that sign... It was like, okay, oh yeah, yeah, let me, let me make sure I watch out for ticks. So I, like, I would appreciate a sign that says like, hey, watch out for amoebas. Well, That's exactly enough. what the family said too. They're not pushing for you know, egregious measures. What they're really asking for is better testing. They want it to be added to the list of diseases that are actually you know, reported by law to the state, right? To the to health agencies in the state. And they want signage to make people aware of what. Well, so I think you could simplify this whole thing, right? Bypass the need for like, a dedicated scientist and lab group testing all the waters all across the country and just have people know that if you live in, if you live in the South and it's over 80 degrees, if the water's over 80 degrees, 
there's a slight danger. And it well, could what not about just this family who's south, vacationing in the south, and they don't know that? Or, what like, about the guy like doing like a nasal spray, like, I, like or the kid like swimming in his yard, and it's like uh, there's water. Like what you get a okay look like, look, like if you use bath water because it's tap water. Like how do, they how do you say handle that? It, the, it's very very unlikely to be in tap water. Good news for everyone at home. Right? Un unlikely. But, but, <laughs> but <laughs> how it does happen in super rare cases is like basically like build up inside old pipes may become an area where that can How old? develop. <laughs> but but How th much this is where you get to. It's like, it's unavoidable if it's, it's it seems, you know. Okay, I look, mean, how do you, how I'd do you appreciate a sign. Yeah. And, I, and yeah. I, I would also appreciate, you know, the, the, the main concern that I think you're touching upon is that it's going to create uh, pandemonium and also like behavior change. Like no one will want to go in the lake and it will hurt tourism or something like that. I think like more people just South need Carolina. to watch this show and then everyone will know. Yeah, they'll be there informed. You You're just giving more evidence of Josh's position. He wasn't thinking that at all <laughs> yeah. about tourism and whatnot. Uh, but anyway, I, I agree with it. Um, so what's happening in New York? What's happening in New York is it's hot. It's very, very hot. I've noticed. To the Your point statement. that, yeah. yeah, as of a couple of years ago, they actually reclassified New York to be the same like climate zone. Uh, they call it um, subtropical. Sub yes, right. They Liv reclassified it, the so now... Tropics. I know. <laughs> it always surprises me that I'm in this little concrete jungle, but then I'll take a train to Brooklyn, and I'll see an ocean, and I'm like, what is that doing here? It's well, just, you well, don't feel it at all. This is, this is island life. Yeah. yeah. There island go. tropical life. Yeah. Yeah. All right. so, they call it the urban heat index. This is a little fun, not-so-fun fact for us New Yorkers here. So the urban heat index, basically because there's so much construction, so much concrete, so much pavement, everything, like creates a dome of and heat. air conditioning units and air conditioning units and high population like eight, transportation eight. everything right so it's actually new york city is at the very top of the list of like the roughly 65 cities impacted by this and it's roughly 9.7 degrees hotter in our city than it is if you just exit the city by a little bit so the jungle oh. part of concrete jungle is very accurate yes it's very so accurate. that's why we're, new york was tropical. hotter than parts of the sahara this week all right. Yeah. To circle back to, to the point, though, d do keep that in mind. The, the parents of Jason Carr, they said they had never heard of this amoeba before, th this incident. They said their son was a smart individual, and if he had one warning, he would have thought that swimming in the lake was a bad idea. And, yeah, I mean, there might be a proposed bill at some point to get some signs up. But uh, in the meantime, if you're watching this and you didn't know about this amoeba, just watch out if you're going to be swimming in a lake. Uh, and if you or your kid especially is developing any headache or nausea, just maybe, um, I don't know, maybe take him to the doctor right away. But it's tough because then you're being like almost like a hypochondriac. It's like, oh, my get, son get has a headache. Spinal but I guess just, just yeah. you know, be cognizant of it. This amoeba exists and it's out there. All right, I know exactly what you're thinking. That was a great clip you just watched. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to follow and also check out either these videos or maybe they're on this side. I don't know which side they're on. But we set it up so these are the videos that YouTube is suggesting to you as the best ones that you'll probably like the most. So check them out, this side, this side, and until next time.